Hi there, little chicken nuggets. It's me, Coral. And I'm Andy. Welcome to Grow TV. <laughs> Welcome to Grow TV. Hosted by Coral. Where we have fun with our friends, talk about Jesus, and go over everything the Bible has to offer. Now, once again, welcome to Grow TV. What is up, Andy? How's it going? What it do? Hey there. What's up? All right, no more. Mother! <laughs> we have fun. We sure do. You seem like you're in a really good mood, Carl. Well, it's because I am. Well, why is that? Well, after last week's big idea of everyone could be a leader, well, it got me excited. That's great, Carl. <laughs> it really is. I mean, I'm a leader. I can accomplish so much. That's so good for you, man. What? What was that? Well, I mean, I think it's great that you're confident, but... Uh, but what? Well, leading takes a lot of responsibility. I'm always scared to lead. I'm scared to lead? Why? I mean, what if I fail? <laughs> fail? <laughs> what are you talking about, fail? Well, you know how you could succeed at leading, right? Um, yeah, if you're good at something, you succeed. What's the problem? Well, the problem is, just like you can succeed, you can also fail. Excuse me? Wait, you mean you, you didn't know that? What? <laughs> of course I knew that. I mean, like, you, when you succeed, it's like, when you fail, you know, it's uh, the conundrum of this sentence is what? What? Carl, you're not making any sense. That's because I'm failing, Andy. But. No buts. This is it. Every hope, goal, and dream I had, it's vanished into thin air. Whoa, Carl, that is not. No more leading for me. Let's take a moment to thank all the leaders that I wanted to be like. Hey, Jada. Hey, Andy. How's it going, Carl? Oh, not bad. You excited about being a leader? Carl's not having the best day. Oh, how come? I'm just a little bummed is all. Why's that? Well, I was so excited about being a leader, but then Andy destroyed my whole universe. Okay, not really. I was just reminding Carl that sometimes when you're leading, you may not always succeed. You may fail or mess up. And now he just reminded me twice. Why are you trying to destroy my whole universe, Andy? I'm glad you're not being dramatic about this. I'm not dramatic! <laughs> okay, I'm a little dramatic. Now, Carl, you gotta understand, leading can be scary, but it's so much easier when you have God on your side. Just like Gideon. Exactly. Gideon, what? He? Gideon, he was a normal guy in the Old Testament. Yup, and one day while he was working, an angel came to him and told him that the Lord was with him. But weren't the Israelites, God's people, kind of in a just like a bad spot right then? They were. The people of God were not listening to God, but God still loved them. Oh. That angel also called Gideon a mighty warrior. Hold up. I thought you just said he was a normal dude, not some mighty warrior. <laughs> Those things are completely different. Well, Gideon was surprised by hearing that too, but he was told by the angel that he would be the one to defeat the Midianites, the people who have been treating the Israelites so poorly. <laughs> wow, that's huge. It was, but Gideon started out his mighty warrior status by leading the charge to destroy the idols that his own people had put up. <laughs> Whoa, that was bold. Carl, do you even know what an idol is? Yeah, it's anything that takes place of God. I mean, God talked about it in the Ten Commandments. Respect. Yeah, I know things. That was impressive, Carl. Then Gideon was told he would have to go to battle, even though his community was weak and he was the smallest in his family. Talk about being afraid to fail. That's a lot of pressure. You bet it is. And Gideon was so nervous that he asked for a sign from God. Like a stop sign? Not really. What Gideon was going to do is he was going to take a piece of wool from a lamp, go outside and lay it down. And in the morning, if that wool was wet and the ground was dry, he knew that God would keep his promise and be with him and help him defeat the Midianites. How would a wet piece of wool help? It wouldn't, but that was Gideon's way of making absolute sure that it was God who was calling him. Still weird, but proceed. God gave Gideon the signs he asked for, but when Gideon gathered people to join his army, God told Gideon that there were too many people in his army. So Gideon said, anyone who was afraid to fight can go home. And do you know how many people went home? 500. 22. 22. Ha! Thousand. 
22,000 soldiers. What? What? And even though there were only 10,000 soldiers left, God said it was still too much. So Gideon listened to God and at the end of it, there were only 300 soldiers left. Are you kidding me? Why would God take away Gideon's armies? Well, Gideon was told he would defeat the Midianites and God wanted to make sure that everyone would know that if it wasn't for God, then they would have failed. Holy moly, that's incredible. So they won? They sure did, all because Gideon trusted God and God gave him courage to lead. Well, that's great. So I guess I shouldn't be worried about failing. Right, everyone fails, but it takes real courage and bravery to lead. It takes courage to trust too, and leading with God on your side is so much better than anything else. <laughs> I believe that. What an awesome reminder. God gives me courage <laughs> to lead. Hey Carl, that's our big idea. Heck, what? No, <laughs> you're silly, Jada. Andy. Apparently, today's big idea is God gives me courage to lead. So let's say it out loud on the count of three. One, two, three. God, God gives, gives me, me courage, courage to lead. To lead. <laughs> Way oh to go. God. He gives me the courage and you the courage. And Andy, apparently, who would have thunk? Hey, I got a question, Andy. What are you afraid of? Nothing. Really? Not even this? What is it? Nothing. Ah! <laughs> gotcha. See you next week, kids. Thank you for watching and tune in next week for a new episode of Pro TV.